G'day and what's up? Welcome back to the Grift Code channel and another exciting journey for the Dora project. In this installment, we're going to be going through my process for how I built the aluminium front deck that is currently being broadcast into your eyeballs. If you and your tinny are itching for a casting deck, go grab a beer, sit back and enjoy the ramblings of a man making a stronger, lighter and better front deck. The OG deck, if you can call it a deck, was only just adequate at supporting me. For some reason, the plywood sheet extended across the whole bench seat, weighing in at about 9 kilos. It was supported by an aluminium frame constructed using tech screws and essentially bubble gum. The new deck revolves around a welded aluminium frame and an aluminium sheeted deck. Back to present day, the deck doesn't look too different to what it did a year and a bit ago. Credit where credit is due, the deck has done well considering it's pretty garbage. The deconstruction of this homemade monstrosity was nothing but nightmarish though. Not only were the screws hidden underneath the carpet, but they were rusted beyond all recognition. As you'll soon see, I threw everything but the kitchen sink at this to try and free its grip, but it held tight. If this isn't evidence enough to use quality stainless steel in your builds, I'm not sure how else to illustrate it. Obviously, this is a pain in the butt as a second owner, but if I wanted to keep this and do some maintenance, say underneath the deck, or to get easier access underneath, it'd be nearly impossible. In the end, the deck was persuaded to extricate itself from the shitty screw, whilst other screws required coaxing with vice grips. To find the less obvious screws hidden underneath the carpet, I used a magnet to sweep across the surface, allowing it to snap into place above a screw. Then, cutting the carpet revealed the bastards so that they could be removed. I found using a Dremel to clean the gunk out from the Phillips head made it feasible to unscrew the rusty corpses. Once the final screw was removed, the blank canvas was revealed in all of its glory. As we would expect, the bench seat is taking up much of the forward bow space, but the space between the seat and the bulkhead is ready to have the deck filled. The plan is to build a basic frame with one large centre hatch with the deck being level with the bench seat surface. Now I decided to save you the training montage of me learning to weld, so cutting to a half built frame is the best I can do. The frame is built from the remaining square section the rear deck was built from. It's 25mm square stock, 1.6mm thick. A 30 by 30 square section was required at the front of the frame, as the bulkhead was 5mm lower than the surface of the bench seat. The frame rests atop of the bulkhead lip, with two tabs used to bolt the frame to the bulkhead. The rear side of the hatch is to be secured using roof nuts into the bench seat. The centre hatch is much larger than what's been used in the rear, and as such, an additional support truss needed to be secured to the aluminium sheet. I did have some troubles with my new welder, so after miserably failing to weld the truss to the sheet, I ended up opting to rivet it together. At this point, I figured I should weld a small lip for the latch to connect to. In hindsight, this is probably unnecessary, but it does move the latch a little closer to the center of the hatch lid, making it look a little bit neater. As a newbie welder, you might expect that most of my welds needed a cleanup with the angle grinder. To the astute of you, the hatch may look a little oversized, but the overhang at the front of the frame allows for a hidden piano hinge. This is totally unorthodox, and if I had my time again, I'd do it differently. The reason I don't like it is I cannot mount anything beyond the hinge edge without interfering with the movement of the hinge. I have some ideas on how I might change this in the future though. As far as securing the hatch, I drilled and tapped a series of holes into the sheet so I could remove the hatch if I desperately needed to. I didn't need to use every hole in the hinge, but it ended up being pretty quick and easy. I used M4 by 4mm screws for the hardware. With the hatch firmly held against the frame, I could pilot mark the hole positions to be drilled to 5mm so the hinge could be riveted in place. If you'd like to use stainless rivets, it's definitely easier with a pneumatic rivet gun, unless you've eaten like 10,000 weight picks and you're ready to work out your forearms. Whilst not my greatest choice, the piano hinge has been pretty flawless and the hatch can open and close effortlessly. If you've watched the rear deck build, you'd be familiar with the hatch latches I'm going to be using. With the extra lip welded to the frame, I had to determine the correct position to drill the 50mm hole. 
don't check my maths as I can't recall if it ended up being bang on, but it hasn't been a problem. The use of a compass was to get a rough idea of if my hole saw was drilling central to where it was needed. Using chalk pens is a great way of marking stuff up like this, and it's super easy to clean up. A WD-40 hole saw makes super short work of the alley sheet, and the result is a very clean hole. The latch is slightly wider than the hole saw, and a little bit of finessing is required to get that snug fit. Like before, I did need to add a spacer shim on the inside of the latch. This way it kept it nice and secure. The frame is a very snug fit, squeezing nicely between the bulkhead and the bench seat. To secure the frame into place, I've gone back to my usual habits and opted for riv nuts. Not only are they convenient to attach and remove the frame, it also makes it possible to use thicker hardware as the frame is relying on the sheer strength of the bolts. Without the outer panels in place, the M6 hardware is really easy to install into the rift nuts. With just the outer bolts in place, it was time to give the deck its first stand test. I definitely needed to add a little more hardware through the centre of the frame though. Onto the outer panels. To mock up the outer panels, I used some core flute to cut templates. Cardboard is definitely a convenient alternative to core flute, but core flute has a little more integrity and dimensional stability. Starting by cutting the sheet to length, I could rough in some basic allowances and shapes. The first pass is never perfect, and shaping the outer profile takes a little bit of time. By pushing the sheet up against the hull, make marks where the sheet is contacting, and then cut away a sliver. Repeat until you're happy. If you're making a panel like this, you can check if it's mirrored on the other side to save you some time. Fortunately for me, the mirror was a perfect fit. Transferring the shape onto the sheet is pretty self-explanatory, but I decided I wanted some additional room between the panel and the hull. I made a rough scribe 5mm from the original template to add some room. Though my marking was rough, the jigsaw is pretty good at hiding those sins by commanding a gentle curve. After cutting, you can make alterations either with the jigsaw or more gentle touch-ups with the flap disc on a grinder. In the end, I was really happy I made the additional allowance at the edge, as I hadn't considered the thickness of the sheet. Just the same as the rear deck build, I secured the panels to the frame by rivnutting the panel and attaching the fasteners through the frame and into the rivnuts. This way, absolutely no fasteners are needed from the top or getting caught and trapped under the carpet. The extra fasteners in the middle of the frame also got rid of that last little bit of flex. And so there we have it, a lighter, stronger, and better front deck. I'll get to the price in just a sec, but I'd like to ask a favor. If you found this helpful, please consider liking the video. And if you want to keep up to date with the Dora project, hit subscribe. So back to the price. I used up my last little bit of alley sheet, so that was roughly about 60 bucks. The extrusions, another 60, the hinge, 10, latch, 10, and hardware, about 15 bucks. All up, just about 160, give or take, depending on where you want to buy. Thanks for tuning in for another video of the Dora Project on the Griftco channel, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Catch you soon.